Hey, uh, can I get those digits? No? Okay. What's up, cats and kittens? I'm back again. I, uh, I've had very little sleep. I played a, a, a music, a music show last night, a music, a music concert, a gig, a rock show, and I got home really late, and I'm way behind on filming these things. I've tried to shoot this one maybe 15 times now, and let's see if this one takes. So... Today, I would like to talk about one of my favorite franchises of all time and favorite characters of all time. Let me get my props and let me turn on my focus. That character would be Chester Gold's Dick Tracy, created in 1931. Dick Tracy has been a favorite character of mine for as long as I can remember. I, uh, I used to sneak in my dad's closet when I was a little kid, and he had a, a board game from 1963 called Dick Tracy's Crime Stoppers. And I would stare at that thing. It had a, uh, it had a big spinner wheel of all the villains and, um, and some cards with their faces. And I would just stare at it and was just amazed with all these characters. I mean, they're just so, you know, just weird and, um, they're like monsters, but gangsters. And then, and then I've mentioned this before, but I really, really have always loved the, um, the whole like name associated with their trait or look kind of thing with the, with Dick Tracy's, uh, rogues gallery. So I was just fascinated. Um, the artwork on the game was based on this series, The Dick Tracy Show. This is from 1961. My dad got me this collection later, much later in life. And so all the artwork in that game was based on on these drawings. So I would actually sit around and, and draw these things a bit when I was a kid. But this is kind of how I grew up knowing these characters. Um, and I've just been such a huge fan for forever, for as long as I can remember. I actually named a band after a character from this show um, growing up. So, so yeah, I would um, I would be in his in his room looking at his stuff, and he had other things too, Dick Tracy related. He had comics. This is my comic, but it was probably roughly around the same era. My dad was born in 1950, so you know. He had a lot of uh, he had a lot of toys and stuff he held on to, and they were all from the late fifties, early sixties. So, um, Dick Tracy was a huge a huge thing for him as well. Um, well, I guess first he taught me. So, um, yeah, so I I enjoyed that game. Basically, since then, anytime I see that yellow trench coat and and hat combo. I flip out and I have to pick pick it up. This is from Funko. This is uh, far superior to those pop things. I wish they were still doing these wacky wobblers. Last year I got this. This is a um, 1960s soapy dispenser. That it was actually a soap dispenser. Um, they have they have hundreds of these things for the different for different characters, but. Man, I love this one. It's in great shape, too. So, in uh, 1975 ish, uh, Warren Beatty got the idea to. Um, he wanted to uh, create a Dick Tracy movie, and he started brainstorming with uh, a couple other people, and they came up with a script. And uh, there were some rights issues, I believe, and it was bouncing around. And for the next, like, 12 to 13 years, um, that thing was, was trying to get made with Warren Beatty involved. And I'm actually kind of glad it didn't get made when it did because, you know, back in 75 or, or sooner, because I've seen some of the, uh, you know, I read some, that some of the early scripts were not really that great. 
but when we finally did get our Dick Tracy movie in 1990, oh my God, was that special. To me, anyway. Um, I think overall it was a financially, financially a flop, but I just love this thing so much. Um, I don't think we would have the movie that we got if it was made today. There's so much charm to it. You know, it's it's dark and gritty, but also, you know, very colorful and vibrant. It's got the painted cityscapes. It's just an amazing movie, and I think it owes a lot of its success and the way it looks to the movie that came out the year prior, and that is uh, Tim Burton's Batman. Um, I think that I think that Dick Tracy would not be the movie that it is without that movie coming out. It definitely owes a lot. Even in uh, Danny Elfman's theme. I mean, like, listen to those themes. They're basically the same. <laughs> but uh, like I was saying, you know, it just kind of ties into... I don't think it would be the movie that it is today. You know, although I would love to have a new Dick Tracy movie. You know, that doesn't mean that we are losing the old movie. But I would love to see a new interpretation. And I would love to see that with John Hamm in the role. That's always been my dream at least for the last few years um and then the second thing about the 1990 dick tracy's movie uh was the merchandise i don't think i would have the love for the movie that i have if it weren't for this yellow and blue and red circle emblem i mean put this on a shirt put this on a mug you name it i buy it the uh <clears throat> There was so much stuff that came out for this movie. So much. I wish I had so much more, but I, I have a very small collection here that I'm showing you. But um, <clears throat> one of the coolest things that I had as a kid, and it's funny because it's also board game related. I feel like my, my entire love for Dick Tracy came from, from two board games, and that was my dad's 1960s board game called Crime Stoppers. And then in, um, when the movie came out, the McDonald's game also called Crime Stoppers. If you don't remember, McDonald's had a, uh, a kind of sweepstakes type game for Dick Tracy. And it was uh, like a scratch off, I believe, card and cups. And they had a few things that were kind of going on. But my, at the time, my sister worked for McDonald's and she was a manager, actually. And she brought me home some of the huge um, advertisement type display stuff. And I, for years and years and years, and I don't know what happened to this stuff now. It kills me to think about it. But I had these giant, bigger than me, uh, hard cardboard cutouts of like all the villains um, and how much money they were worth upon capture and stuff like that and I just freaking love those things and who knows where they ended up but um it just really it it made my love grow even more for for this whole franchise um and then how can I not mention the Playmates toy line which just really sealed the deal for me. I mean, oh my God, these things are amazing. I have always, always cherished this toy line. And it's just so cool. I mean, it's Playmates and it goes hand in hand with the Ninja Turtle stuff. I mean, they're the same size figure. You can play with Dick Tracy right along with Raphael, no problem. The figures are just so cool. I I have no complaints with these things. I know a lot of people are like, well, they need their coats and blah, 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 which would have been cool, but it's just an amazing toy line. I, I am very lucky that I did not uh, get rid of my original toys. So I have, I have all my original toys except for the vehicles. I don't, I must have sold those at some point. I, I have trouble remembering where all these things went over the years, but um, I have sold so much of my childhood toys that it bums me out, but I am so happy that I have my Dick Tracy collection. So this is my, my childhood collector's case. If you grew up in the 80s and 90s, you know that 
every franchise had a collector's case for the figures, just like this. Um, this is my actual one from my childhood, which just means a lot to me. You know, you can always rebuy these things, but they're never going to be the one that you had growing up. And just knowing that this came from my home and is the one I played with. And so I've got all my figures. Here is the man himself. He's a little dirty, but it's okay. I've got my carded one. The man himself. I've got Big Boy Caprice, the top dog. Here's Influence, great villain. The movie version of Influence is so cool. The, the actor is just like terrifying, honestly. I always loved these, uh, these gun strap-ons that they had. Here is the brow. Got shoulders. I think I have almost all of these except for the ones I don't have are Mumbles, Rodent, and of course the Blank, which famously was not actually released in the US from what I understand. Um, they didn't release, this is Prune Face. They didn't release the blank figure, um, even though it was on the packaging, because they didn't want to ruin the surprise of who the character was in the movie, which, spoiler alert, it was Madonna. Um, Breathless Mahoney was the blank. Here's Flat Top. So, from what I understand, the actual figure was was not really released. It may, I think it was released in Canada, from what I hear. And so if you uh, if you have one of those things carded, I'm sure you're sitting on a on a gold mine there. Here's Itchy. I have some of their uh, accessories. So just they're not on all these figures, but Steve the Tramp, one of my favorites. I love the scene in the movie with Steve the Tramp when the when the house shakes when uh, him and Dick Tracy are fighting. Here's uh, Tracy's partner Sam Ketchum. And then, last but not least, we've got, well, maybe maybe it is least in this case, um, Lips Manless, one of the dumbest figures in the line, who also had his cement shoes. So crazy that they did that for a, for a kid's toy line. But yeah, that's all I got. So just, you know, last week's video was really long. It was an hour long. So I just wanted to pop on and do like a 10-minute video on one of my favorite things in the whole entire world dick tracy so hope you guys are doing okay i will see you in the next video